is that the University of London was leading the way in many ways in introducing alternative dispute resolution into the undergraduate curriculum some 20 years ago. And I think we all have to acknowledge at this stage that commercial disputes have changed a great deal over the last three decades. We also have to acknowledge that governments, states, are no longer dealing with disputes in a sustainable fashion. Uh, the fact that you have a backlog here is not surprising. Everyone has a backlog. You won't find a single state in the world where you will not find a backlog in litigation. If you go to your neighbor, India, you will find that you typically have to wait a decade for a civil case to come before you. You are likely to be dead, or at least have lost a lot of money in the meantime. And so, states and governments are no longer able to sustain this kind of level of litigation. I think we also have to acknowledge that, in fact, litigation is not the right way of solving many disputes. It is a very blunt instrument. There is a winner and a loser, and that's it. But in fact, in financial disputes, rarely do you want to be just a winner or a loser, because of course, often, a loser is bankrupt, and that's not much use to you if they declare bankruptcy, because you'll get nothing at all. Now, interestingly, last year, the Queen Mary University of London Arbitration Centre, in its annual review of arbitration, it picks a different topic each year, looked at the use of arbitration, and arbitration, of course, is the preferred method of dispute resolution in most commercial disputes today. And what's interesting is that it's moved in the last few years from 90%, that 97% of people wanting to use arbitration as the preferred method of dispute resolution. But what's more interesting to me is that in the last three years, we have moved from about 34% of people using dispute resolution, using arbitration, I beg your pardon, alongside ADR, normally mediation. Now we're to about half commercial disputes using ADR alongside arbitration. And I think that's a very interesting thing. Why are people doing this? Why are people using ADR as well as arbitration? Well, the answer, I think, is very simple. And I think few people will dispute it. If you look at arbitration, it has become increasingly judicialized. If you look at arbitration, it simply mimics litigation. In fact, the two biggest complaints about arbitration are one, it costs too much money. That is the complaint against litigation. And secondly, it is too slow. Well, we've all heard that story in every single legal system around the world in the last 30 years. This is the story everywhere. Now I want to make a little point. My interest in this is actually around culture. And my own view is that if you give people a label and a role, they will perform it. I've tried this many times with students. You say to them, you be the prosecutor, you be the defendant, you, uh, you are the witness, tell them this, this is your story. And the people fall into their role immediately. And the thing is with lawyers, and indeed with arbitrators to some extent, they fall into role. So if you get an arbitrator, they will say, my job is to be neutral, my job is to arbitrate, my job is to resolve this dispute. It's not my job to tell them to go to ADR first. Now I think that's wrong. I think that in a way, if you become too judicialized in arbitration, then you need to think about new dispute resolutions. And I think the focus of all alternative dispute resolution should be simply this, outcomes. You must think about the outcome. The rest of it doesn't matter very much in my view. And I take my lead from the English High Court, of course I would, I'm a little biased, and the words of Mr. Justice Tolson in the case of Brandless and Black. And he said this of arbitration, you must give arbitrators the widest discretion permitted by law to determine the procedure to be adopted to ensure just, expeditious, economical, and final determination of the outcome. That's all you're about. You need to be quick, you need to be economical, and you need to be final. You need to put it to bed. And I think that a sustainable approach to arbitration has to do these things. It has to acknowledge that this is what it's about. 
whatever kind of dispute resolution you're trying to do, if you want to be sustainable, you've got to be economical, you've got to be quick, you've got to be just, and you've got to put an end to it. And I think those are the key things that you need to think about. One final thing I'd like to say is that I think there's a great job for BIAC to do here, and that is this. Quite a lot of times, and we've heard uh, the chairman of Citibank calling for some local rules, and I think he's right, because quite often what happens is people look for supranational rules. There are some people who believe, and I'm not one of them, that arbitration and ADR is a kind of supranational law. It sits above all our legal systems. I think that is wrong. I think the key thing is that people need to be local. They need to understand the local issues. They need to be able to address the parties as they understand it. So I think that as you think about this, how you're going to be sustainable here, I think you should think about the outcomes of the parties, place some flexibility, discretion, party autonomy. But I hope that you will also innovate a sustainable approach where your people, your mediators, your arbitrators, are people familiar with the local context and where you can work in a local context yet with a, a universal rule within your own uh, context. So I wish you very well, and I look forward to coming back again to hearing about your wonderful news. Thank you.